Well, uh, this is the third video in my series on building a dual LA-2A. And I wanted to give an update on where we're at and where we're headed from here. Uh, as you can see, I've got the enclosure assembled and put together. And uh, you uh, don't have the front panel on at this point. And I obviously don't have the top cover on either. But the circuit board is finished. Uh, we've covered that on the first two uh, videos, uh, getting the circuit board completed. So that's been done. Uh, the circuit board is now mounted uh, onto the bottom plate of the enclosure. And you can see that's been completed. Um, so I had to drill holes into the bottom of the enclosure and I'm using standoffs. These are 440 screws that go into the standoff and then they also go uh, into the standoffs from underneath uh, the enclosure as well. So the circuit board is in place. I kind of had to measure and figure out exactly where I wanted the circuit board. I think I got it in, in an ideal location. Um, it's uh, about an inch and a half back from the front. And it also allows for the audio transformers that are located here. Um, and it allows for the uh, power, transform power transformer over here on the right as well. So I think it's in a good location. Um, it's a little bit tricky getting all the holes drilled and everything to line up properly. I didn't have any mistakes, but sometimes <laughs> mistakes can happen. Um, but so far, so good on this build. I don't have any of my traditional boo-boos that pop up every once in a while. Um, uh, today, I uh, started working on uh, my audio pigtails, and I'll show you that in a moment. So we got the circuit board here, and then we got the power transformer that's located over here. This is a tor toroidal transformer. Uh, looks like the donut shaped transformers. And uh, those transformers are a little bit more efficient than the older uh, iron core type transformers. Um, and they also produce less magnetic radiation or magnetic flux around the transformer. So they're uh, ideal for use in an, in an audio circuit such as this. It's a multiple output power transformer. Uh, it's actually the power transformer that, that uh, is ideal or is designed for this top circuit, the dual LA-2A. Um, uh, it has two heater circuits or two heater windings. Uh, both of those are 6.3 volts. All the tubes in this project are 6.3 volts. And um, so there's two. There's uh, one uh, 6.3 volt winding that feeds the left channel circuit and then there's another 6.3 volt winding that feeds the right channel circuit. Uh, and so that feeds the heaters. And then you have a winding uh, here that is for, um, uh, excuse me, this winding here is a, a low voltage winding that feeds uh, the bridge rectifier and a five volt regulator. Uh, this supplies the five volts that need, that's needed by the relays. Um, the original LA-2A obviously didn't have any relays, um, but this is an enhanced circuit and where we've added a true bypass to the uh, unit. That's something the original did not have. Uh, so to power these relays, they're miniature Bosch 5-volt relays. Uh, so they operate on 5-volt DC. And so that's the little circuit that does that. Then we have a dual 250-volt AC winding here. And we have it wound in a 250, 0, 250 configuration. So that provides the high voltage uh, that's needed for the vacuum tube. So that's your B plus voltage to the tubes. Uh, then you can see not hooked up. We have our ground connection that's here. This will go to chassis ground, uh, which will also feed the electrical ground. Uh, and then we have some grounds on the circuit board. And that's what you see these wires here. Um, so there will be a lots of ground wires that will go to one common ground point. That's important in an audio unit such as this. It's actually important in just about any unit. Um, you know, the bad thing about bad grounds and, and uh, in audio equipment, that manifests itself as hum. Um, you know, if you've been in the audio world very long, you've, you've heard of a ground loop is what they would call it. And that produces a hum in your, your audio system or your sound system. Um, an audio system is very easy to recognize because you can hear it, but in a computer system or a, a digital device or something like that, you can't hear ground loops, but they still occur. 
Um, so what we're going to be using here is a, what they call a star configuration or a star ground. That basically means that everything in the unit is going to have a central grounding point, and that's this bolt that's located back here. There's a bolt that I have um, on the back panel, and all these ground wires will have a ground lug, a lug terminal placed onto the end of the wire, and so each of them will fit on that ground wire. The transformer will go there, the electrical ground will connect there, the grounds from the circuit board will connect there, the actual um, mounts for the transformers. I've got a ground wire run to each one of those, and they'll ground there as well. Uh, the XLR jacks will ground there if need if need be, um, and uh, that may be it. So, uh, and then the front panel will have a ground connection to there as well. So everything will have one central point of grounding. I don't like daisy chaining for grounding. In other words, a one thing grounds to the next, and then we run another wire to the next. That's called daisy chaining doesn't work very well in audio equipment. So stay away from any type of daisy chain. Uh, yes, you're gonna have more ground wires. Uh, it's not gonna look as pretty doing the star ground, but it's much more effective in, in keeping the noise floor to the equipment as low as possible. Uh, you see back here, there's two uh, transformers. These are solder transformers. Uh, these are the audio output transformers and uh, they connect to the board. I already have the, the transformers wired and connected. Uh, that's a little bit tedious. Uh, they use miniature Molex connectors. Uh, the transformers just had bare wire coming out of them, so I had to terminate them, put the connector on. A little bit tedious work, but I got all that completed. Uh, then over here on the left, uh, you can see the two input transformers, also made by Souter, very high quality transformers, and they're mounted on the left side panel uh, there and they're already wired into the board as well. Uh, everything on this circuit board will be using a uh, Molex connector so that everything can unplug. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages of that, but that's the way the circuit board was set up to be used. I was using these type of connectors, so I went with it. Um, I'm not a big connector fan, to be honest. I mean, I like uh, my wiring connections to be soldered in, no possible chance of having bad connections later. Um, so we're gonna try this. This is probably the, fir the first project I've built that actually uses Molex connectors. So we're gonna go with it and see what happens. Uh, the XLR jacks in the back, there's two inputs and two outputs, because remember this is a two, two channel unit. I've already got the uh, pigtail soldered on to each XLR connector, and I have the pigtails uh, terminated with the Molex connector. So all these have to do is simply bend right over and plug into the board like so. Um, so these are a little bit tedious to make up, time consuming, not very hard, just time consuming. Uh, I also have some other ones. These are some uh, uh, audio jumper cables uh, or the wiring that's going to be going to the front panel. So I've already actually made up the cables that has the Molex connectors on the end. So they are right ready to go. I've made them up. I think I got them long enough. I actually made up two of them and I thought, wait a minute, I don't think those two are going to be long enough. So I actually had to redo a couple of them uh, because they'll have to go from the board to the front panel where the actual gain, the peak reduction controls are, one for the left, one for the right, the view meters, and then your switches that you know change the operation of the unit. All that's located on the front panel. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, where I go from here is uh, I tr I'm gonna try to do as much wiring. I gotta finish wiring my uh, electrical input my AC coming into the unit, that's got to be finished. Um, and I'm gonna get these actually plugged in. They're finished wire and I just wanted to leave them unplugged so you can see that. They gotta be plugged in. Uh, and then that's about all I can do without doing the front panel. And I'm probably gonna wire the front panel. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to assemble it, put the uh, potentiometers uh, and controls and switches on the front panel without it being connected so I can lay it down flat and get everything soldered real nice and pretty. And then I can put everything into place and uh, actually tidy up some of these wires. So we're not far, not far from being completed. So um, I'll do another video once I get the front panel on, get everything wired. I'll probably actually uh, do a video with me actually wiring up 
a potentiometer and a switch on the front panel. That might be pretty cool to do as well. Um, and then once we get the assembly finished, uh, then it'll be obviously time for testing. So I'm going to do several videos through the testing. The initial testing, the first power up, uh, where we don't put any tubes in. Uh, we actually are going to make some dry measurements of our voltages and do a couple of tests with some load resistors and make sure you know everything is correct. And then we begin to add our tubes. And uh, so we're going to do some testing along the way. Then at the very end, we'll do some actual uh, some audio parameter tests, uh, like some distortion uh, tests and some uh, uh, signal to noise tests and things like that, and some frequency response tests, the impulse response tests. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited. Um, but uh, the wiring is very tedious. Uh, it's not very fun. Uh, it kind of gets old <laughs> really quick. Um, but I have to sit here and you know solder these little pigtails and all. And I'm using, um, this is in, what I call install mic cable. Um, this is probably, uh, what's it called, West Pen, West Pen audio wire here, which is basically two conductors plus a drain or a shield. Um, so this is kind of what a recording studio would use when they're installing microphone cable in the wall and, and stuff. Um, so I use it to do all the wiring. Anytime I need, need shielded wiring here in the unit, this is the wiring I'm going to be using. Um, everything else, if it's unshielded, everything is twisted. Um, so all of my uh, transformer wires over here for the secondary, they're twisted. My inputs will be twisted as well. Uh, my transformer wiring here, uh, I'm not, uh, not a big fan of the way uh, this is done, but to be able to make use of having the true bypass with the relays on the circuit board, uh, all the wiring from the transformer comes to the board. Uh, and then everything is switched here on the board. Uh, the original LA-2A and the way most LA-2As are wired, if you want to be true to the original circuit, your output transformers, the secondaries, would go straight to your XLR connectors. Uh, same way with the input XLR connectors. Uh, the females would wire directly to the primary of your input transformers. And so you would have less wiring going to the circuitry. Uh, probably a better way to do it, but if you do it that way, you really can't get true bypass out of the unit. Um, so some give and take. So it depends on how you like the circuit design. And uh, this is going to be pretty cool. Uh, can't, can't wait. Uh, I, I, well, we'll give you a little sneak peek. Here's the front panel show you that. Still got the plastic on it, so you probably can't see it very well. Um, but it has a left and a right, and they can be used independently, or we can flip a switch, and now it's in stereo. Uh, two view meters, you have a gain and a peak reduction for both channels, uh, and different switches, obviously, to change the different modes. So um, I'm excited. We're getting uh, close to actually being able to see some tubes light up here very soon. So We'll see how it goes. We'll have another video as time progresses. So uh, thanks for checking it out, and I hope you're enjoying this build. It's It's been really fun, and uh, uh, it's, it's getting exciting. And got more projects coming up later, too, uh, that I think you will enjoy being a part of. So thanks a bunch.